Now this is a human walking along and we can see that we walk with a nice straight leg and one of the really key bits of anatomy is up here. These are the abductor muscles on the outside of your hip joint and they stop your hips swinging from side to side as you're walking. Robin, I think that's a chimp over your end, isn't yes. it? Yep. Completely different gait, so that's um, very bent, very bent hip, bent knee. Well, really what you can see in the chimpanzee is, is the strong flexure of, of the knee, bringing all of the force of the body down behind the knee and in front of the foot. Now, now this is, is actually continually flexing the knee joint, and this is what makes that sort of walking so inefficient. That looks very inefficient with this sort of does, rotating yeah, kind of bent, hip. Bent, it's bent, very, well, it's well, very hard to do. Well, but one of the reasons is if you stand, stand in this sort of posture, gravity is continuing to flex your knee, and you, your muscles oh. in front of the thigh work harder and harder and harder to stop you yeah. bending more and more, and it becomes very tiring. It's very tiring, and, and your knees start to shake. And the, yes. Oh, so it's much more efficient yes. to actually straighten yes, your legs. Yes. It's more efficient to stand that way and it's more efficient to walk this way Absolutely, as well. Yeah. And so who's this in the middle then? That's a Lucy. So this is this is how it's, Lucy would have walked. I, I, I would say a, a, bit, a little bit more straight straight leg than that too. I think that's even more straight. Even legs. more straight straight leg than that. She's there's looking... a slight swing on the hips, isn't there? There's, there's a little. Yes, well, the, yeah. you've got a, basically a, bro a broader hip than we would have had. I think again we have to emphasise the fact that the, you know chimpanzees are not our ancestors, and we're using them as a comparison. But it seems that what we've got here in Australopithecus afarensis is something which is almost halfway between a very chimpanzee-like way of walking and a modern human way of walking. Well, looking at the anatomy of Lucy's feet, knees and pelvis, it suggests she's spending lots of time walking on the ground. But some new research has been looking at another bit of her anatomy, her hands, and this may shed some light on how much she was using them for climbing. It may seem surprising, but the way we use our hands in climbing a tree or gripping a tool is recorded in our wrist bones. Powell Cotton House in southern England is one of the most important primate study centres in the world. Our ancient ancestors spent more time in the trees than we do. But new research conducted here is beginning to shed light on when they decided to trade life in the trees for life on the ground. Paleoanthropologist Professor Gabrielle Macho has been studying the wrist bones of modern chimpanzees and humans and comparing them with wrist bones from Lucy's species, Australopithecus afarensis. We have been looking at the capitate. It's the biggest bone of the wrist and it's sitting right in the middle here and it's along the main load transfer from the middle finger to the upper arm. Gabrielle has been putting capitate bones into a CT scanner to reveal the internal structure of trabecular bone. In a little bone like this, you get a very complex arrangement of trabecular bone. And it's no coincidence, it's also called the spongy bone. Having made CT scans of capitate bones, Gabrielle applied the same computer modeling that aircraft manufacturers use to analyze stress in the wings of aeroplanes. This showed where the spongy bone had been reinforced to cope with the forces applied to them. The difference between the two bones is quite striking. In the chimpanzee, you see the red loads travel towards the left side, and this is the side where you have your little finger. In modern humans, you see it quite nicely, it is traveling towards the thumb side. So chimps show evidence of reinforcement on the little finger side of this bone, because that is where the loading is greatest when they climb trees. But in humans, who use their thumbs far more, the loading is on the thumb side of the bone. This technique could reveal how much time ancient species spent in the trees. Next, Gabrielle looked at capitates from Australopithecus afarensis, the same species as Lucy. She also analyzed capitates from another slightly older species, Australopithecus anamensis. Her findings suggest that a dramatic change was taking place. The older one, Australopithecus anamensis, behaves more like a chimpanzee, so you have the load transfer towards the little finger, and this is what you expect if you're moving up a tree 
if, if you're climbing, whereas the later Australopithecus afarensis has more of a human-like pattern. So it definitely used its thumb um, much more regularly um, than the older specimens and it is maybe some indication that they have largely abandoned an arboreal lifestyle, so they have come to the ground.